All right, so guys, this is a advanced band lesson on a segment of Pirates of the Caribbean. And we're gonna do measures 50 to 58. It's kind of a short chunk, but lots of notes in there, as you can see. Um, so I'm gonna talk about part one first, which is flute, clarinet one, and trumpet one. You'll notice that we're in three, four, and there's a lot of different rhythmic things going on. So we're gonna count through some rhythms first. Um, one thing I need to point out is that there are small notes at the beginning of this segment. So for the flute part and also the clarinet and trumpet one part, it says PT period two, and that's that's what we call a cue for a different part. However, just play it. I think it'd be cool for you to learn this whole segment. So here's how it's going to work. Um, we have a G for the flutes, F natural. It's written as F natural because of the prior measure F sharp, and the rhythm is one, a two and three and so you have a G down to a D at the end of flutes for the clarinets you're gonna play a G a B natural C E just a quick refresher on the B natural it's the everything all the buttons that you can push bottom right pinky and the front left so your part goes like this that's measure 50. Trumpets, yours is going to sound the same if you play in the first part, but you have A, G, A, B with the second finger, C, E. Looking at 51, we go A, C, B, G, A, E. That's for the trumpet and the clarinet. So you sound like this. Okay, so flutes, you're going to have G, B flat, A, F, G, D. Yeah, and then if you look at 52, the third measure of that series. We kind of have a similar thing, but we're gonna move up the scale. So trumpets and clarinets, A, G, A, B, C, D, E. If you are not familiar trumpets with that D and the E, the D is first valve, sounds like this. And then the E is open. So trumpets, you're going all the way up to the top of the staff, basically. Okay, so uh, clarinet and trumpet are going to sound like this for 52. We have these isolated eighth notes. Just make sure you play those with some gusto. Flute players, during that section, you get to pop all the way up to a high D. So first we'll talk about the, that D. It's the first note of 53. Thumb, two, three, right pinky. Really fast there. Okay, so that whole measure. Okay, so you want to make, make sure we're using fast air. And then for you, 52 and 53 flutes is D, a, D, a, B flat, C, just like the low C, but really fast air. And then the, the high three notes that we talked about. Cool. Then the next four bars, we're going kind of quickly, but feel free to rewind here. Um, we have flutes, D, a, G, A, B flat, D, just like we had at 50 and 51 except you're, you're adding into the texture if the full group is playing, but you've already learned this, and I would suggest, again, play what you have at 50. Um, and then it's just really a repeat. Those three bars are identical to 50, 51, 52. And then in 57, we've got three of these optional, either high or low Ds. Here's the low one. And then you have G, A. The high would be like the same fingering, except without the right hand down. And then we get into 58, which is kind of like the main theme of the piece. All right, so again, if you have questions about those things, um, you can kind of get in touch with us. I'm gonna move to part two. So this one's a little bit different because we have some supporting rhythms um, for some parts of this. So clarinet and trumpet two. You have A, B, A, B, C, E. Similar to the other part that we just talked about. This is part two, second clarinet, second trumpet. Yeah, so we want to make sure we're clear on the rhythm. One, a two, and three, and 51. Okay, and then 52, we kind of go up the scale like we talked about earlier, and I'll explain this for you guys. Okay, so clarinets, once you get to that B, hopefully you know, which is all the fingers, double thumb, and 
this pinky, that pinky. We just lift fingers. So B is here. C, you lift your left pinky. Going to the D at the end of 53, sorry, 52, we lift the right pinky. And then the first note of that isolated eighth note uh, measure is E, then down to B, then G, like this. Okay. So if you were listening earlier, um, I explained that 54, 55, and 56 are just a straight up repeat of 50, 51, and 52. I'm going to go to 57. We have now a 4 4 measure, which is G sharp, A, B, A, B. So the G sharp clarinets is the side key here, trumpets, it's two and three. So we're going to sound like this. And then we arrive at 58. Okay, so that's a lot of notes. Um, I think once you can uh, just kind of manage the rhythm, it should be pretty manageable overall. Okay, we're gonna skip now to part three. And this is a saxophone part. I'm not gonna waste time by getting my saxophone out, but I'll show you the fingerings. You have your E up here with the thumb down, D, E, F sharp, G, B. Okay, so the rhythm there at 50 saxophones is one, a uh, two, and three, and and then the same rhythm in the next bar. One, a uh, two, and three, and you have E, G, F sharp, D, E, B. Then sax is in the third measure. You have E, D, E, F sharp, G. I bet you haven't played many of these. The next note there is A, which is just a uh, thumb, one, two, kind of like the low A, but you have the thumb depressed, pushing that down. And then you go all the way up to the high B there, which is just thumb and the pointer finger. Okay, so that measures B, F sharp, D, a lot of different uh, figurings there. Okay, so the sax is then we, just like the other voices, we repeat at 54, um, the, the 50, 51, 52 series again. And then at 57, you guys have a D sharp, which sax is. You push all six, one, two, three, four, five, six, plus the closest pinky button to your ring finger on the right hand. Okay, and that includes the thumb being down. All right, so you go D sharp, E, F sharp, E, F sharp, and then we're there at 58. Great, let's move on to voice three. This one is totally different. So this is for the third clarinet part, and uh, I think that's about it on this one. Um, there might be a third trumpet part that's part three as well. So we have a completely different rhythm, all these isolated impact notes. Um, clarinets, you can see that, and if you're a trumpet player too, you can see they have C, rest, rest, C, C. Okay, so you're gonna play either the low one or the high one. I'll play the low one for now. Ready, 50. Two, three. Two, three. Okay, and then I go to a B natural, second finger. If you're playing the high part, it's this clarinet, thumbs, one, two, three, one, two, three, and the right front bottom pinky, uh, yeah, the right front bottom pinky, you go like this. Two and three. Two and three. And that B natural that you heard me play, you add this finger, and then just lift it back up for the C. If you look at 53, we have three either low E's or high E's. And if you're uh, kind of just jumping in on this part, the high E's clarinets are like this thumb, both of them, one, two, three, one, two, like this. If you don't want to play the high part, you just play the E that you're familiar with, like this. Okay, so then we kind of have a repeat of the 50, 51, 52 material. It takes us all the way to the 4 4 bar at measure 57. Now, this is a really unique part, so I'm going to show you a little bit more in detail the figurings. The low part is E, F sharp with the pointer finger. Then you go from F sharp to G sharp, this left bar here. And then E, E, it should sound like this. And that takes you into 58. If you're playing the high part, it's E like this, F sharp like this, G sharp is, is a tricky one because you lift this finger and you keep the three fingers here, double thumbs, and you add this pinky button right here, okay? 
and it's gonna sound like this. It's pretty high up there, so you gotta really support it with good airflow and keep your embouchure nice and firm. So those, uh, that measure there, 57 is. Okay, so that gets us all the way through parts one, two, and three. I'm gonna skip over to Mr. West for part five. Cool, part five is going to cover the trombone and baritone parts, and probably Jude is probably gonna be a lot of similarities with the bass part. I'm not currently looking at that. Mr. Suchek might jump in uh, if he has any supplemental information for you, Jude, as I walk through these notes for um, the baritone and trombone. Um, the, these rhythms and notes are actually very closely related to the last part Mr. Suchek went over, but I'm assuming you maybe jumped to this portion of the video, Low Brass. So I'm going to go through the notes and rhythms with you guys at measure 50. We are in the time signature of 3-4, so that creates some counting confusion a little bit throughout this section. So just make sure you listen carefully to how I count these rhythms here at measure 50. It starts out like this at measure 50. One, two, three. And one, two, three. And one. Three and one, all right? The notes there aren't super tricky. It's just B flats and it goes down to an A, which is going to be um, second finger for the baritones and also second position for the trombones in 51 for that A. So make sure you uh, interpret that carefully. So I'm just gonna play through those first couple of measures of measure 50, it sounds like this. Just like that, guys. So that rhythm again, one, two, three, and one. Mr. Suchak has some supplemental information for that. So if you are playing the bass guitar part, you're gonna start on G's, not D's, like the other part. So it'll be two, three, G, and then you have an F, leading back to the G. You know what, I actually uh, was looking at the wrong part entirely, so I'll Sorry about that. You can kind of nix the last 60 seconds. The first note we start on low brass is, in fact, a, uh, a G, a G. Um, so that's going to be pretty low in our range. We're going to start with one and two on the baritone, and that low G for the trombones is going to be um, what position? It's going to be a fourth position for you trombones. So we're way down here. Lowest note baritones at the end of the line is going to be one three, um, one and three position, and for the trombones that's going to uh, be the sixth position for you guys. So we're really low in our range there. Sorry that I misspoke there, guys. There's a, about sixty seconds in that video you can kind of ignore. We're going to go on when we get to measure fifty three. This is kind of crazy. We have what we call upbeats. We're playing only on the ands. So as you're keeping time like this, you're going to play in between your foot taps. And, and, and one. And the notes there are F, 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 G. So double check to make sure you're playing the correct notes there. F is gonna be one and three for the baritones, and it's gonna be sixth position for the trombones. So that measure is gonna sound like this. Ready, and. So you're playing on all of the in-between beats there. So I'm gonna start at 50 and just give you a little bit of an idea of how that's all gonna sound when you put it together, low brass. Starting at 50, here it is. And. Cool. And then we start to repeat ourselves there in the next few measures. So I'm gonna kind of skip past those measures 54 and 55 and 56 are all the same as measures 50, 51, and 52. So that takes us to the 4-4 measure at measure 57. And again, we return to this idea of playing on the upbeats or on the ands. So the rhythm there sounds like this. Ready? And, 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 four, and one. So you're going to skip beat one. And, 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 four, and one. All of the notes there are D, back in the comfortable range on our instruments. So one and two for the baritones, fourth position for the trombones. And it sounds like this, ready, and one. I'm gonna try that again, sounds like this, ready, and one. And that takes us to 58, which is the main theme. Sorry for the mis uh, misinformation there at the beginning of your portion there, guys. Um, but we're gonna move on to some of the percussion parts, I believe, next with Mr. Suchek. 
All right, so if you look at measure 50, snare drummers, you are going to play, uh, looks like a lot of space between the first note and the next note in that measure. It doesn't really clearly state on your sheet, but we're in 3-4. So we're going to count this like this. One, two, three, and one, two, three, and a one. Okay, so that's kind of a tricky little isolated uh, 2 16th note passage there. You really want to pulse so that you're feeling the rest. So I'm going to do it again. It's one, two, three, and one, two, three, and a one. Okay, so that takes us to the third bar. There we just have a quarter note with a couple rests. And then similar to the low uh, brass parts, we have in the fourth measure of this phrase, we have rest and rest and rest and one. All off beats. So you're going to go like this. One and two and three and one. And it kind of doesn't matter what sticking you use. You saw me play that with my left hand until the downbeat. That's what we call natural sticking. So we're just kind of putting, if you take a grid of right, left, right, left, right, left, whatever. If it's on the downbeats, it's right. If it's on the ands, it's left. So I'm going to go back to 50, play four measures for you. One, two, three, and one, two, three, and a one, two, three, one and two and three and one okay and then if you look at measure uh the fifth bar of that phrase which i believe is 54 we just repeat the same material so we go again one two three and one two three and a one okay now here at 57 we drop down to mezzo forte so you can kind of make a bigger distinct change in volume here and the rhythm is one and a two and a three and a four e and a one and if you notice underneath the bar there's a crescendo too so you can start at the edge if you want to or halfway where you go one and a two and a three and a four e and a one and that gets us to 58. okay bell parts you should be similar to actually the mallet parts um here are Pretty much non-existent. Um, so if if mallets, if you want to refer to the flute section we just talked about, that would be a lot more interesting for you. And those parts are up on the link that we have posted recently. So that about does it for these parts. If you guys have questions or if you want to show off a little bit, send us a video, um, and we'd be happy to give you some suggestions or feedback or praise or whatever. You know, if you want to just get in touch with us, we miss you guys tremendously, and I hope that we can see you all again. Mr. West? Yeah, I made the uh, mistake in our beginner video of the week of congratulating and wishing well to the eighth graders, but there aren't really any eighth graders in beginning band. So I'll, I'll do that again right here. Uh, eighth graders, I'm sure some of you are even wrapping up your classes today, if not even earlier this week. Some of you maybe have a couple more days to go. Uh, congratulations. We're looking forward to keeping you guys involved at the next level as well. Um, and now you just have more time to play your instruments, especially since you can't go anywhere. So feel free to stay involved with us. Uh, we'll have more of these coming out in the next couple of weeks. So we'll see you guys soon. We miss you. Um, yeah, like Mr. Sutrick said, reach out to us. See you guys soon.